Hey everyone, uh, the live is on and uh, welcome to the my monthly live stream about sewing. Today's topic is zippers, which was something that I actually asked for you guys to vote both on my YouTube channel and on Instagram, which my is uh, Instagram.com last stitch. I asked for suggestions if I should do interfacing or zippers because I was actually <laughs> quite confused about what to do this week. Um, I would say it was super close. I think on YouTube actually interfacing won out, but when I tell you all the words, uh, zippers just barely won over the zippers, so uh, over the interfacing. So that's what we're going to talk about right now. So there are a couple of people in the chat now. I want to say hi. Hi, Duncan. Hi Sherry, so nice to see you. Um, we have a little bit of a change in time today because at least in most countries here in Europe we had daylight savings so we moved the um, clock one hour back. So there, it's a fun fact actually that we'll see how long <laughs> we'll keep the daylight savings because I know that the uh, ye, um, how does it, European Union is uh, lobbying to make a change in 2019 already to remove the the winter time, as we say in Sweden. So we'll see how that goes. I I'm not really a big fan because it does mess up my sleeping pattern a bit, and you get slightly slightly jet lag. So to be honest, I'm not really sure if we need that extra hour that switch. I would love to hear your suggestions about that as well. I know that I think you have daylight savings in North America too, right? Um, oh, more people in the chat now. Hi, Glenda. Hi, Kate. Hi, Slow Mellow. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Absolutely Fabulous. We have people from Spain, from the States, from Ukraine, super cool. Um, Michigan and England and UK and Canada. I probably missed a few. I will definitely keep an eye on the chat. So please ask away and keep the conversation going. I will do my best to pick up all your questions and uh, also just chime in and help each other out as well because this is obviously a big topic. I tend to take really big topics and then realize there are lots of things to cover that we don't always get to in an hour but we're going to sort of breathe through this and uh, I've had a bit of an odd week this week so I'm definitely um, a little bit, um, I usually do like a slideshow and stuff, but now I'm going to wing it a little bit tonight, but I think I have enough to say about Cyprus and I sure do, you do as well. And I have a show note, which is, uh, pr prime, uh, which is pretty prime with a lot of different topic suggestions. And, um, we have also some feedback regarding the time changes. Slow Mellow says, I hate the time changes. And Sherry says they started way back to help the farmers. I think, I believe we have Day, less daylight during the day yeah yeah it's it was a farmer thing and uh, basically the conclusion is we most of us don't really li live according to that specific time needs today in in a lot of countries so hence why perhaps the the switch from summertime to winter time is is probably obsolete and uh, well I mean yes it's nice to have some more sun in the morning I think but it's not that huge deal because now it's pitch black outside uh here in sweden which it wasn't well yesterday um well, we have so many international crowd now we have a uh, borsche from macedonia so nice to hear all your european people i wonder if you all had the daylight saving as well now or if you're doing a switch some other day because it does confuse this thing as well to keep track of the uh and how howard so many people in the chat tonight that's super excited hopefully i can get my um all the topics covered that i plan for and we of course as always i we can sort of make the conversation happens you know all over the place and um i was actually <clears throat> promised that i will set things on fire tonight and uh I will uh show my if you <laughs> a little bit later i will show my method <laughs> on how I shorten zippers with uh, involves me basically setting fire to the zipper so I'm not really sure that I recommend this better but I <laughs> thought that I should show you anyways how I do it and you can make your own opinion if that's something you would try at home or or not <laughs> maybe it will be a cautionary tale and I will set something on fire um interesting thing about the daylight saving because slow Miller says that the farmer says it doesn't really help 
help for the situation as well. And uh, and uh, in Ukraine, the time changes as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, actually, based on the opinions in the chat of this live stream, it's a thumbs down for daylight saving. So perhaps we'll see. It would be super interested to see if if this will happen in the European Union that they will. I think they will make it optional for countries that are members of the European Union to keep the daylight saving or not. But uh, if I would can imagine that if some countries opt to keep the daylight saving, it become even more confusing because you already have several different time zones in Europe and to keep track of even more, that will make things even messier. So I suspect that most countries that are at least part of the European Union and probably neighboring countries as well will jump on the conclusions and that's really interesting to see if that will affect you guys in North America as well also have daylight saving if if you're going to skip that one as well so we'll see if if it disappears in 2019 or maybe later on but it's definitely on the way out that's at least my estimation of it and Sandy says I think it's going to stop next year in Spain yeah and there's actually strong lobbying in Sweden as well because people think it's like uh, you know it doesn't make any difference anymore anyways let's talk about zippers and obviously zippers can be both our friend and our enemy uh i am will confess to be one of those people who for uh a quite a long time uh used various methods <laughs> to avoid inserting zippers and my worst method was that i when i was making fit dresses that i uh, skipped adding uh, a zipper <laughs> in the side seam and obviously you, that means that uh, you have to wiggle <laughs> in a really super tight uh, situation over the bust and the shoulder area to get to that narrow part in the waist. And uh, what happened was basically that I managed to rip a few dresses apart because I had some zipper phobia, <laughs> which is, uh, I mean, it's, uh, that was not a great idea, but that, that was my situation for a long time. I'm definitely not there anymore. I, I don't really feel that afraid about zippers anymore. And I think I've developed some really good methods that I want to share with you today. But if you are struggling with zippers and being afraid of it, I can assure you that I don't think you're alone because there are lots of situations where zippers can be quite tricky. So, uh, well, I'm just going to start doing it, just a quick rundown of what type of zippers that there are, um, what we sort of zippers that are available. I think when I looked at uh, site I've linked also in the description so you can check that out yourself a really good description but it basically boils down to four different type of zippers and the first one is closed end zippers which is this one which you obviously use uh, for pockets and uh, when you're attaching zippers like here or perhaps at the sleeves and obviously perhaps most common as the fly on a pair of trousers so these are definitely something that I try to keep at home a big bunch because that's usually something uh, that I always am looking for. Uh, so I like to have a few like black and dark navy and dark gray. So I, I usually try to, to make sure that I have a stash of these zippers because they're super useful. And, um, and the second type of uh, zippers is separating zippers because I, I realized that I should actually wear zippers today. So I... I put myself into um, a hoodie or a jacket that I did. So this is basically a separating zipper. And um, this is one of my favorite zippers. It's for, if you have stuff and steel in your country, you should definitely check that out because they, they sell a wonderful version of the YKK zipper, which is very retro looking with metal um, zip pull. And they've sold this for like 15 years and I keep keep buying more because it's such a unique zipper and it's really good quality as well so I can highly recommend that and uh, speaking of zipper phobia um, hi Chris by the way uh, absolutely fabulous says I read that people were phobic of invisible zipper so I made sure it was one of the first thing I did so again trapped in that excited that seems a, like a really good idea to face your fears head on good for you <laughs> and um, we have another type of zippers that uh, I was actually going to show you a jacket that I did for my husband with with the two separating zippers. But 
Uh, I just left for work now and it took that jacket. So I was like, oh, hey, I was going to do that. So instead, I will show you this Nike jacket. This is something I am very fond of myself. I really like uh, having um, this type of separated zipper because obviously, especially when you're working out, uh, when in, in the start <laughs> or when you're walking, whatever, when it's, you're outside, you're quite cool. And then initially, after a while, I mean, you will become warmer and warmer. So that's really nice. So basically, what I do is that by the by the end of the workout, I usually just have the zip of just pulled a little bit so it just ties in one space and let the rest ventilate. So that's one of the big advantages, I think. Also, it's great, obviously, if you are pregnant or if your stomach is expanding for some other reasons. This is having a separating zipper is another great way to uh, make, you know, everything more comfortable. So I'm a big fan of those. That said, I will say that um, zipper issues, which is quite common, especially when you buy a low quality zippers and, and definitely when you buy ready to wear because zippers are usually rubbish, uh, is that I find that perhaps the two way zippers has a tendency of breaking down a little bit more often than other type of zippers. And the fourth pair of zippers which i don't have to show you um i had quite a lot actually but i spent it all when i did my book about sewing activewear and that is uh sort of zippers by the jaw you know where you can buy a big roll of zippers so it's basically one continuous zipper going on and on and on and uh, when you buy that you basically um say i want say two yards or two meters of zippers and then you by pulls the zipper pulls how many you think you will need and then you just um the sales person at least that's how it works in sweden adds those zipper pulls on that continuous piece of zipper and the big advantage of using that they're called zippers and they're very easy to stitch over so for instance when i did this um jacket by fair trade last year i added this uh zipper here for the pocket and this is made by continuous zipper so it's very easy to stitch over this very um, how easy to stitch uh, zipper coil. So if you find that you can, I can recommend it. But I will say though, and I would love to have your your thoughts about this is when I buy zipper on the yard, I do find that uh, it's quite hard to get the zipper pull on it. I struggle, and I even seen sale per persons struggle with that as well. So. That is one of the disadvantages and also, at least in Sweden, I would say that the zippers by the jaw is not in general of the same quality as um, regular zippers. At least that's my opinion, at least what you can find here in Sweden, but perhaps there's different other countries for sure. Um, and um, we have more people. Hi Sharon, hi Marcel and Chris who's actually featured in my book, Sewing Activewear, and I will actually refer to him because he has a great point of view um, of how you should do zippers and his interview in the book. So that's really nice to see you in the chat now uh, because one thing that I think that is quite a common problem is that when you are stitching zippers that you will usually end up with a disordered zipper and um, Christopher says has a great advice which I definitely co-sign on is that when sewing zippers don't overpin one is enough and freehand the rest and that I think is definitely one of the most common beginners mistake uh, is that we overpin and we don't understand that we need to how shall I say, um, I think it's the word manipulate. We need to keep the zipper tape in check and we don't, shouldn't really do that by doing lots of zippers. Instead, we need to make sure that we have established where the beginning of the zipper and the end of the zipper should be on, on the fabric. And then we just need to make sure that we don't stretch the zipper band or the fabric. So that's really, really important. I, I If you need stability, I would definitely my personal opinion is that I definitely recommend that you hand based rather than using tons of pins. Uh, so Christopher, you please elaborate on, on your, your thoughts process about that as well, but also that is how they do it in the garment industry as well. They don't really use a bunch of zippers when attaching the tape. Uh, 
and um, and how goes this says I use finger press wonder tape to keep my sips in place to keep the sips smooth exactly where I want yes that's a great suggestion uh, I'm gonna tear this place down now because of course I forgot to that's how it goes today. <laughs> I'm definitely freestyling it today. I was a little bit underprepared. Wonder tape, which I seem to refer to in every video I do, is this washable double-sided tape. Um, and that is super, super useful when you're attaching zipper. Because as I said, one of the biggest problems when attaching zippers is that you will stretch out either the fabric or the zipper tape or both. And it will result in a wobbly seam, especially when you're stitching knits. Uh, so definitely use the wonder tape for any type of uh, struggles that you're having. I, I actually used it for my jeans that I was making recently as well, just to keep that zipper tape in place. Uh, and um, and we have some thoughts here about the uh, zipper on the jaw situation here. Um, uh, let me see here. I tried it once. It went to the bin. So Sandy and uh and she shares this i need that for my boat canvas so yeah obviously the advantage of having those long zippers uh, on the yard is that you can you're not limited to any standard sizes so that's one of the big advantages um and christopher says do you have a tip of thicker um coil zippers well i'm not really sure uh, I assume you mean these, which is basically what you do for a lot of uh, functional wear. Uh, I wouldn't say that I do have a lot of tips, but um, you definitely need to make sure that, again, that you don't stretch it out. You have to, uh, and um, also, it's very, since it's so thick, it's definitely not something you can stitch over. So you need definitely to end below and above where the zipper is. So that's one of my initial thing but if you buy good quality um sort of wider zip this uh, like the yk and k brand it's definitely will last a long time and duncan also says has a good suggestions that uh i also use wonder clip and go slow when adjusting stitching as i go because that's definitely one of the things you need to really uh how should i say Attaching zipper is not a situation where you should rush things because it's definitely one of those uh, things where you really need to be mindful because I've found every time I, I do something fast with the, with the zippers, I tend to stretch things out. So you really need to make sure that you're just gradually stitching the zipper tape in place. And Christopher says, I usually do line stuff. One seam allowance goes between the ring and the long finger zipper band goes between the long and pointer and the last seam allowance goes between thumb and pointer in all in the right so basically I, what i'm assuming is that you use a lot of your fingers to basically make sure that the zipper is staying put and that is i think um what as we learn sewing more and more we can make sure we sort of the um how is the word in english we say um, motor skills is that the word you say in english right when you um, you train your, your your fingers like they say babies develop motor skills uh, I'm probably saying the wrong word now but please correct me and uh, that makes you know your your skill based way of handling things will improve so and Cypress I think is definitely one of those things that by training you will develop those motor skills ah dexterity right thank you so much Oh, um, yes, fine motor skills. Okay, thank you so much. It's always good because I always learn some new languages, uh, new words as well. <laughs> and I also learn things about zippers because I have to do some research when I'm doing this. Um, I'm going to talk now a bit about uh, attaching zippers on knits because as I'm showing, uh, the one I'm wearing here is one of those. And... I think the biggest struggle when you're attaching zipper on the knit is the fact that you're merging a very stretchy fabric with something very rigid and also zipper tape is deceptively <laughs> rigid because it can be stretched out. I'm sure you have seen a lot of um, zip up hoodies in stores where before they're even worn have a sort of wobbly situation going on like this and that is because 
something has been stretched out during the attachment process uh, and it can also happen after a while which is super annoying so I'm going to sort of go through now my method of attaching um, zippers so what I do when I is that I interface uh, both the this side of the fabric the one that goes the, the outer layer of the fabric and I also make facing usually not always but if I do I make sure that I interface that as well and then to keep in place I make sure that I um, secure or have a point here and, and down below that I know that this is the end points and I've measured that so I know that if something starts to stretch out I know that I need to, to keep it in and I either based the zipper in place for the first row or I use wonder tape as several of you suggested as well and uh, so what I do is I actually stitch two rows I start by attaching uh, I sandwich the zipper and that also helps keeping it stable so what I do is that I I sandwich um, the zipper between the facing and the, the outer layer of the fabric and I actually start by stitching just by the end of the zipper so if you see here you can you will obviously stitch here then later but what I do is that I start by stitching at the end here because I find that once I've attached that it's so much easier to stitch closer to the edge so I'd actually do two rows of stitches when I'm attaching this type of zipper and then of course when, once I'm done I also top stitch it so I can keep the facing in place I hope that made sense but that is how I do that and I find that for me have some type of fusible interfacing pretty much uh, solves the problem of uh, having stretch out so I'm going for instance um, this is probably one of the biggest challenges is uh, using a striped knit fabric <laughs> as you can see but uh, with using the method that I just described I managed to pretty much align the the stripes on the zipper so um, I wouldn't say it was easy because it was really quite hard but just being really careful about the method and keeping it stable definitely helps and um, I'm going to see mm. and how it also has a suggestion that I was pre-shrink and pre-shrink and in knit fabrics before I stop my garment and that is super important and I actually found a tip when I was doing some research for today's live stream uh have you heard of this but in the excellent reader's digest complete book of sewing perhaps it's called they actually suggested that for knits you should also pre-shrink the zipper have you heard of that before have you tried it i was really curious but that does make sense it depends i, I assume of the quality of the the zipper tape i mean obviously at least on older tapes it's not it's cotton and, and not um nylon but i'm not really sure which if that's true for the the very rig, rigid sort of uh, synthetic zipper tape as well but i've i find that it was like a curious curious suggestion and uh, sherry says anyone want to know how who who to water water seal zippers i ski and sail and would love to make my outerwear well the good news is sherry that there are actually special zippers that are waterproof that you will be able to buy in the speciality sewing notion store uh, and just sealing the seams you need to use some type of um, sealant either tape or um, a liquid seam sealant and uh, using that it's it's not definitely um, it's a little bit tricky i would say starting out i've only tried a couple of times but I think with practice that's something that becomes easier and easier but you need the comb combination of some type of water sealant to make sure that the seam is also um, doesn't leak in water and then use a water sealant or what do you call it? water waterproof zipper which is somewhat it's not super easy to find but I know that at least speciality sewing stores usually sell that one And Duncan says that all the books would refer to cotton. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's probably why they suggest, because uh, these are actually uh, some winter zippers that I got from a friend that she had gotten from her mother. So these are the, the older ones. And I think it's quite unusual these days to find uh, cotton zipper tape. And now, well, um, 
with no further ado, I will now talk about how I shorten zippers because that's the situation that we will end up. Ideally, we will always be able to uh, match the zipper with our intended project. For instance, when I uh, draft my own patterns, such as I do a lot of hoodies, most of these I draft myself, I make sure that the body's correspondence with the standard size of um, uh, the zippers. So for instance, in Sweden, at least, uh, it's like five, 55 centimeters, 60 centimeters. So it moves in five centimeters increments, which equals two inches. So if you um, are doing some alterations, perhaps doing uh, shortening or extending your pattern, you should definitely think about making sure that the zipper is, or the bodice is increasing with a uh, five or two inches. Um, so you will be able to easily find a zipper, but if not, you will have to shorten your zipper. And I'm going to demonstrate now. Uh, this is <laughs> this. You may be. I am crazy, but I, 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 just, I figured I should show it anyway. What I this is a regular jeans zipper, which is one of the things that I, I usually need to shorten because sometimes I don't find the short size. And I start by using one of these. Uh, is it called plier? Plier, right? And um, it's very simple. So I just grab these, the zipper tees, and mm, mm, and pull. So it's usually easier. <laughs> well, I'm probably so nervous now that I'm doing it live. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, so I do that, and I until I'm happy. And now I have a good margin, and then I'm going. You can see here I've left the uh, the stopper piece and I'm going to show how I do that now but first of all what I do is that I I cut the zipper tape and of course you can try to do it like it's usually the edges are like pinked um, so maybe I can successfully do that probably not I don't have any pinking shares actually I'm always thinking that I should get one but I I keep forgetting it but you don't really need to do that. But I, so this is obviously not very good, <laughs> but uh, even though it's synthetic, it might fray a bit. And this is where my one of my favorite household tools, which is a lighter. And as we know, uh, most zipper tapes today are made of synthetic, so it will behave like plastic. So what I do now is to seal the edges, I first just slightly burn like this, Tiny, tiny bit. So just a little bit of um, a hardened edge. Don't go <laughs> overboard. You will once start, things start to to smell funny. It's time to stop. You just need to go super lightly. And now this this is sealed, right? Of course, this will obviously not work on cotton. And now for my uh, second trick here. <laughs> ah, okay. I can see if I I need to to bring up the camera so you can see closely. Um, if you look on this side, do you see this sort of uh, amber colored um, stopper? So you can, I think, buy separate stoppers to add. But what I do instead is that I take advantage of the fact that, again, thread is made of uh, polyester and melts really well. So what I've done here is actually that I've stitched some uh, heavy duty top stitching thread or jeans thread. As you can see here, I'm doing the stopper on the other hand, so I'm just going to to finish that one. So I just stitch uh, basically the same width as the stopper that I just removed. I do that for a couple more stitches. Okay, now uh, <laughs> and and don't uh, don't sue me if <laughs> this doesn't work for you. I usually try to show method I feel very confident in. This was mostly something I, I thought, since I, that this is how I do it, I figured I might as well show it. And uh, you will probably, I'm not sure that you will be a fan. Uh, there are probably lots of other ways to do it better. But anyways, I secured the stitch. I won't do it too quickly now because um, you can actually the fact that it will melt the thread will also make it more secure so you don't need to be like super um 
meticulous about you know securing the stitch okay so now it's time for stage two using the lighter then i just i'm going to remove that so i don't set anything on fire accidentally again proceed with caution bam bam it's starting to melt and while I'm melting you can actually <laughs> you can actually shape uh the melted fabric like this so you can pierce it down as you can see this is pretty quick it's already uh, very hard and now hopefully <laughs> yep see voila it's secured <laughs> okay i was super nervous doing this but <laughs> Uh, I, I think I managed it to work. Now, obviously, if you use a uh, matching thread, which has the same color as the zipper, this, this sort of blob will more, be more discreet, but I use the golden color for clarity. And of course, it's also, perhaps you should let it set for a bit before you start working with it, but from, it's pretty much rock hard already. So what did you think about this method? Is it something you employed yourself or do you advise against it? I would love to know. <laughs> and um sherry says your list of speciality fabric stores around the world and available everyone should check it out yes if you head over to my website theelastage.com and you can also access it on the domain sewingactivate.com you will find a international list of suppliers both for fabrics notions all the things that pertains to active wear so definitely worth checking out as well and um, also speaking about melting things is don't put iron on tape that would make it melt it too especially if you the coil the coil version this is definitely um, i think let me see here i think it's either nylon or polyester that's more sensitive to heat please um tell me which one is the most sensitive to heat but i think you need to proceed with caution definitely i find that some are actually quite warm resistance uh but some are very sensitive so that's definitely something you need to be mindful of <laughs> and uh, we have some more suggestions Duncan says fusible thread would work and it could be iron to melt so that's another suggestion and natalie says i thought it was quite interesting not sure <laughs> i would trust doing it myself though and Howard says, yes, nylon is more sensitive to heat. So that's good to know. So, um, and a lot of the coils are made of nylon and the tape as well, for sure. Uh, and Goddess Arriving says, I've been burning them for years too. Glad to see I'm not the only one who's crazy a lot. <laughs> oh, that's very comforting to know because I, I don't want to be uh, put out... Um, going viral here as, as a, like someone who's teaching really awful and dangerous sewing techniques by setting zippers on fire but proceed with caution uh it's um it's really good um another trick that you can use the zipper for is to um if you're using um i don't have it now but this is actually cotton cotton band but it, some, sometimes these um are also made of polyester and uh, a nice way of securing the end because you can trace a little bit is to also just gently melt it with a lighter so there are a few few uh situations where a lighter can be a good little tool to use um for your sewing and of course the most obvious one is to determine what sort of fiber content that uh, you are dealing with which is obviously uh, where this lighter comes very very handy um yeah so yeah nylon definitely be careful with the iron and nylon and that's also good to know because some of the um uh, uh, the wool and nylon threads that you can use in the looper and for the surgeon's cover stitching is, is obviously made of nylon i know there is also polyester versions but that's also good to know so you be a bit more careful usually you can be um less careful when you're ironing uh, uh, stitches that is uh, used polyester but when you're dealing with nylon definitely be more careful um yes so i'm going to show you another tip now that i'm a big fan of and uh, 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 let me see here um 
and this is when you're top stitching your um, zipper when you're doing trousers or pants as you say in in some english-speaking countries um you you will always have to end up top stitching after you attached it and you stitch around this and this is something that i'm a big big fan of and you can actually cut this out of paper it's called a zipper template and you can use this in two ways just use this as your standard template so every time you are doing a pair of trousers you just use this as your guide and then you can do one or two things either you just place it on the fabric and use a tracing pen like this and it's really good because usually you don't really need two different width i know perhaps the jeans they're a little bit wider and perhaps classic trousers are a bit more narrow but i don't think you need more than two uh, and to keep it in place you can use double-sided tape but uh, in the excellent book which i i keep plugging which has some fantastic zipper tips uh, i've again linked to this book in the description section it's called sewing circuits from the fashion industry and it addresses a lot of the points that i've been talking about today so why they don't use um, pins as much in the garment industry and they also show a different way of using that i tried when i did my last pair these are good to show you now um, so one of the disadvantages i would say uh, when tracing is that if you're not careful which i'm sometimes not you can set the <laughs> set the tracing pen and then you will have an issue on hand where you because obviously heat if you're ironing heat will set a lot of tracing pens and you will have a, a problem getting rid of it so what they suggest in this book sewing secrets of the fashion industry is that you place this uh, on the fabric and instead of tracing uh, you just keep it in place with your hands but i for, but for these jeans and another pair i did i used uh, regular tape that i folded out so it became double double sided tape and then i just placed it here and then i actually believe it or not just stitched around this edge so no tracing no marking and i think it looked turned out pretty nice uh, especially for the first attempt so i was i've was, I was been intrigued by this method for a very long time i've had this book for over 10 years but uh, this was the first time that I actually had the courage of skipping the tracing and just using this guy. And it works so well. I mean, I, they definitely know their stuff in the garment industry. So they, we have a lot, a lot to learn as, as home sewers about that. So if you haven't already, definitely uh, spend a little bit of time cutting out these pieces. Then you can have just reuse it for every pair of pants that you're making. Works well for jeans and any type of trousers. So this is one of my staples so i have a couple of those that my i have one for trousers uh, regular dress pants and i have one for jeans which is a little bit wider and obviously you don't need to worry about the length because you just place it like this and you stitch over and uh sherry says you mean it's amazing they look just like my Clis Liz clarible jeans thank you so much sherry that's very <laughs> good that's very validating to hear and Linda Faye Lewis says, I think it's a great method. I use a template to top stitch all of my fly slippers. And Linda Faye, she knows her thing. She's a super skilled. So if you haven't already, you should definitely check out her blog. She is amazing. And uh, yeah, this is, again, I like to have those inexpensive or basically free tools to improve your sewing because we all learn a few tricks, always little things to improve. So I'm happy always to share when I find something that I feel works. and which we haven't addressed at all which is definitely something that we will concern ourselves with when we are attaching zipper and that is what type of press of foot press of foot right press of foot press of foot is it uh, i know this but when i'm doing live shows i always <laughs> always forget things which is plural pluralis and which is singularis but anyways most sewing machines will have a regular press of foot for zippers included which is um a narrow foot and my banana which uh, you can actually um, move the needle which is why it's so great to um, to use for um, so you can actually move on both sides you don't have to move around you can just move the needle from one side so it has as you can see 
it has slots on both sides i not every sewing machine has that uh, ability but it's definitely really great uh so this i use and confession time while i do a fair bit of uh, blind zip applications for instance um uh, when I when I got, got over my zipper phobia, this is a dress that I made, which has a, an invisible zipper. I mean, it's not entirely invisible, obviously, but, you know, good enough. You can and perhaps should buy a special press foot when inserting invisible zippers, because obviously you want to press down the zipper coil so that you can stitch super, super close to the edge, which is why you know the fabric will sort of hide the zipper but to be honest uh my last i used to have a who's kind weeking which is a winter sewing machine it's called 2000 i'm sure you have seen it it's a beautiful machine it comes in lots of different colors it's usually i think it's about as old as i am it was usually it was done in the early 70s and um I bought the um, invisible zipper presser foot for that, which squeezes down the uh, the coil, so it really lies flat. <laughs> but perhaps this was because it was a long time ago, and I wasn't as mindful about my sewing and not really giving things uh, the time that it is served. But I ended up thinking, my conclusion was that I find that I can achieve just as good result using my regular zipper foot because. I can still stitch super close and um, they recommend for instance in the the book that i was just referring to the industrial secret book um, they actually recommend using an all to um, keep the zipper coil down when you're stitching so i have find that i get satisfying results using the regular zipper foot so i would love to hear you when you're doing invisible zippers do you use this one or do you use the speciality blind presser foot and do you find that you will get better result with the blind foot because i'm really curious to know as i have actually not invested in one when i switched machine because i couldn't really find it you know worth the price because obviously presser foot or presser feet are super super expensive and um and Linda Face Lewis, do you use cardboard? Yes, I use cardboard for the press template. Absolutely. You can use the back of the pizza box. Uh, I'm a big fan. I shouldn't say <laughs> I'm a big fan, but I, I eat my fair share of frozen pizzas. And, and that box uh, is the perfect thickness for making any type of press templates. Um, and food. Right. Thank you, Duncan. Um, and now... Uh, also uh, christopher says i have um he talks about the foot i have an industrial like foot that is used for more or less everything check the Janome hp foot so if you're a machine you should definitely check that out perhaps it's more versatile and how goldstein says i used invisible zip foot press the coils down first and they return to shape one zipped up and down because obviously yeah it's good to hear i was probably just uh, not patient enough um and but it's definitely perhaps one of those things that is worth investing the time into because what i struggled with when i used the uh, invisible foot was to keep um keep the coil in the ridges that it was dedicated to but i definitely think i was just being too um, in, impatient so uh but whatever method you prefer uh blind zippers or invisible zippers is not that difficult really because the good thing is that because the, the coil sort of bends back, they will bring the fabric on. So you don't have to be absolutely um, super skilled to to achieve a decent result with that one. And especially if you're using uh, a zipper that a zipper tape that matches the fabric somewhat. And, I, and in this case, it doesn't match at all because the, the zipper is white. But I still you can't really tell much because the fabric sort of overlaps over the zipper. I think for me the biggest is actually I have more of a problem uh, being sitting too close, which um, then you will risk dragging in the fabric, and um, so it it's basically overlaps too much. So for instance, sometimes when you're doing the zipper pull, it can actually grab a bit of the fabric. So there's definitely a sweet spot there on on getting the exact right amount, not overlapping, but really really close. And um, 
And Sandy has a tip also. I read that you can press the coils on the visible zip flap before sewing. Yes, I've seen that tip too. And obviously we need to be careful about the heat, but I'm sure that works because that's obviously the tricky thing that you will have to keep that from sort of springing back down or folding back towards its original shape. And Sherry says, I use the regular zipper foot. I have a lot of different feet and have no clue how to use them. I think you're not alone in that. We all have those. There are a lot of different present foot feet and we don't really use them much. Uh, I guess it's time to learn what I have. Yeah, because I would definitely say there are some present foot present feet that are really worth uh, investing time and learning the skills because they definitely can help, but we need to be give it a proper time and really sort of test on different samples. And uh, Christopher says that I bet a piping foot will work well for invisible zippers too. I can imagine that too, because it's a similar thing. It's a foot that can uh, stitch really close. Actually, I use the zipper foot when I am attaching piping as well, because I can stitch so close. So this this definitely having one some type of narrow foot is definitely invaluable, but it should be included, I would say. I'm not really sure because I've only bought used um, sewing machines, so I don't know what's included in a new one, but I would definitely be upset if not a super presser foot is included in the standard package for sure. And Ducker says, I have a several feet, but which one depends on how the make presents itself. Sometimes I use it on on the rides, on the teeth, otherwise the standard foot. So yeah, you can try and see what works for you. It's definitely not an either or, I think. And uh, I think the, the, the most important thing is that whatever method you do is that you take the time and really practice the uh, how to use the presser foot properly. Because it's definitely, I think it's very easy to believe that you're sort of um, freeing yourself from a pain point by uh, spending a lot of money on some speciality press a foot and then only to discover that it actually has a quite a big learning curve and perhaps giving up in the process so i think definitely if you are buying a press foot you should definitely also be prepared to invest the time we had a discussion on the last live stream about the sewing machine uh, rolled hem press foot which is super difficult to use uh, most of you agreed with that and most of you had struggles with it just like i've had so that's definitely one of those speciality press foot that is very very how shall i say the learning curve is huge and it might not actually solve many problems but instead create new problems so you definitely need to i think to think ahead uh because i've done that mistake myself i bought several presser foot presser foot over the years that i've not used just because i i thought that they would make things easy but i wasn't patient enough to learn them properly And standard zip is usually supplied now with a new machine. So that's good to hear. So it's definitely not something that you will end up having to buy separately because it's just so good to have a narrow foot. I mean, I use it for other things as well. I mean, there are a lot of situations, right? Where uh, a narrow foot is very useful. Obviously the advantage is that it is less surface. So it doesn't top stitch as well, perhaps uh, as a regular presser foot, but you know, that's how it is. Also, I would love to hear your suggestions on good zipper brands in Sweden. Uh, we have two that is quite common, the YK and K brand. I think it's definitely regarded as one of the best one. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of those. And uh, I've noticed that when I make my own garments using the YK and K brand, I have never, ever, ever had a zipper fail. And I, I, it's not unusual for me to, to wear my me made jackets for over a decade, for sure. Never, ever had a singular zipper problems however when i bought ready to wear jackets with the ykk marking on the zipper pull i've actually had several uh garments failing on me so now my either they are actually supplying us home service with better quality zippers which is could explain the price tag or which i'm also suspecting perhaps there are some pirate <laughs> versions uh running around uh, in the garment industry because uh, it's probably not 100% checked so because um, I can imagine that the YK and K brand has uh, is regarded as a high quality brand so perhaps the less serious garment manufacturers can say that oh we can install a YK and K brand but the only YK and K about that zipper is is how it's stamped on the zipper pool 
Uh, don't quote me on this one. This is just me guessing, but I am a little bit suspect about how it can differ so much between the ones that I buy and the ones that I had when I bought some red to wear makes. I would love to hear your experience with this brand if you have had any super faith. Hi again. Um, the battery on the laptop died, so that's why I disappeared for a bit. Um, speaking of all things, <laughs> my laptop is really old and they're so expensive to buy. So uh, unfortunately, the power supply has um, it's not really working 100%. So that's why I, I'm kind of not really getting and also i noticed that my tint all of a sudden is is bluish on the camera but that's probably some sort of issue as well that's how it is with technology it's always something right <laughs> i hope now again that's why okay now i don't look blue in the